Welcome to another edition of the Farmcast. We're here about on a customer demo with our S7-800 combine. So really exciting to be out here uh, on a customer's land and just talk about how the demo season's going, how the model year 25 LPB combine is working in, in some customer demos. And, and we also used it within our own field in, in Severance, Colorado. So got Troy Randall here with me, a precision ag manager and somebody new to the show, Preston Juniman. Thanks for joining us. He's one of our precision ag consultants out of a Imperial. Thanks for being here, guys. Yep. Uh, as you can see, we're standing in the middle of a cornfield. We might see the uh, combine drive by behind us here in just a minute. You both have been involved in a lot of demos and, and uh, customer demos, our own machine uh, in our own test farm. What have you, what have you seen? What, what's, what's working with the, uh, the new model year 25 combine? Yeah, so the biggest thing with this combine is we get increased capacity, right? With that 10% uh, cleaning area gain. So we did a couple demos earlier this year, yep. uh, one in wet corn and one in soybeans. And I guess <laughs> one thing I can say is that machine is an absolute monster. You know, in corn, we saw speed increases of about one mile per hour. Grain sample was awesome. Uh, loss was awesome. Everything just, it was like a miracle. Yep, you're, you're pretty happy with it, so. <laughs> <laughs> and customers were as well, I assume. Yeah, customers are, they're, they're really looking at that machine and, and wondering when they can get one, you know. Sure. Soybeans was probably one of the best demos that we did this year. You know, usually when you're running a combine, you're limited either on throughput, losses, or your grain sample, you're gonna you're gonna kind of give and take to get all three of those to kind of work for your operation. And you know what we kind of saw was we were getting almost all three with a 40 foot draper head and some high yielding soybeans. So when you hear from a guy who's ran a combine for more than 40 years that he's completely ecstatic of the way that machine performed, you know it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, and maybe to dive into a little bit of the reporting aspect. So when in the John Deere Operations Center, you can go in there and create a, a summary as to report of, of how the harvest operation went. What are we seeing out of that? What can we share with customers out of that reporting capability? So with those reports, we're able to look at kind of how that machine's operating, how the technology's turned on or off. And really we're, what we're noticing is when that technology is being fully utilized with the automation features, we see a lot of productivity gains as well as uh, savings on fuel efficiency. So there's three measurements on there, right, of, of throughput, productivity, and fuel consumption, right? And then you can tell what level each one of those is at with what level of automation. So with full automation, kind of get into the numbers of what you've talked about as far as customer uh, satisfaction and, and what we've seen as far as throughput with it. No, it kind of went hand in hand. And, you know, it was kind of funny when we were doing the soybean demo, we looked at another customer's operation in the op center and just kind of looked at how they were working. You know, they had two class eight machines. Uh, one was actually John Deere. One was a red machine, which we don't like to talk about <laughs> red machines. But no, two 35-foot heads, they were doing a combined productivity of, of 20 acres an hour. At the time, our 40-foot head on the S7800 was doing 22 acres per hour. That's awesome. Yeah. When you talk about productivity, that that says something right there. So Yeah, so John Deere's, they're, they're, they're saying up to 20%. So would you believe, would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta you gotta take it with a grain of salt in your in your wet corn a little bit just because of you know you you run into a spot with some green stalks, yep. so then you kind of have to manually slow the machine down. But if if it was running good, we just let the automation do its thing and it adjusted the machine with our settings and yep. you know maximize our throughput through that machine. So it's pretty amazing. And I guess you know we've we've talked a lot about in previous uh, farm casts about the technology on this piece of equipment. There's also like engine components and things like that. I, I guess what, in your mind, what is contributing most to kind of those uh, increased productivity numbers? Yeah, so I guess when you look at the horsepower numbers, I think the overall gain on the horsepower is only like 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah but we have a little bit of horsepower gain, but then we have some changes on the machine. So we have some less, less loss through hydraulic motors, things like that. So a little more horsepower, a little less draw on the system from that standpoint um, slightly big cleaning cleaning capacity too so you add a lot together and we can definitely kind of start to see get up to that 20 percent pretty easily just with those gains right there not even taking into account the technology too so yeah and that's not even something we talked about you know you talk about the spreaders being ran by belts yep. that's yep. something that yep. was brought over from the x9 design doesn't seem like it would pull a lot but when you're in green stem soybeans it did a phenomenal job and we didn't see any clumps or plugging or 
you know, you get that nuisance code of the spreader speed dropping down, so mm -hmm. you got to slow the machine down, but we didn't see that with this machine. No. Nope. Let's talk about predictive ground speed automation. Uh, I know when we talked about this in the past after wheat harvest, it, you know, we wanted to see what that looked like in corn. Give us an update either from, from both of your perspective on uh, how that worked in corn. Uh, did we did we see it really help adjust the speed automatically the way we expect it to and all that? So we're still in the thick of demo season right now too. It seems like I keep calling corn harvest, wheat harvest because <laughs> we were all ready to go. Then all of a sudden about in 24 hours, it seemed like everything was ready to go dryly and irrigated across the board. So it's been kind of a scramble to get demos lined up, but we've been getting after and we got a full, kind of a full schedule still of demos to get these machines out and about too. But luckily, yeah, the predictive ground speed automation has been working awesome so far in corn. So it's been loading up that background imagery, imagery within a couple of minutes and gives us a nice, uh, just a nice predicted yield map we can look at. And that's been one kind of cool thing um, the customers we've demoed with, with so far. They like seeing that too, because it gives them an idea of what the, what the field looks like, what they can maybe expect and the good and bad spots too. And it's been pretty much matching up pretty much dang near just like for like with the yield map too. So that's been really cool to see that that technology, that new technology is working like it should to help. And then of course, the best part about that too is the machines using that with predictive ground speed automation so it knows when those good spots are coming up so it has to slow down and knows when those bad spots are coming up so it can speed up a little bit predictively versus more reactively like we've been used to with like harvest smart and the older technology so but that's been really really cool to see there so yeah i think what we've been seeing is typically within the first 200 feet of the field it's i mean it's like boom there's your satellite map yep. and it's pretty dang accurate from yep. what we've yep. been yep. kind of referencing you can take a picture of it before you start harvesting on the on the display there and then once you get the field done you can overlay it and it's pretty cool to see that yeah it's exactly kind of what what we thought was going to come through that machine yeah from that standpoint the predictive ground speed automation i mean when you when you pull into the field you just select your crop these machines they're actually pulling in like regional settings uh, for different crop types so when we pull into like a field down here in colorado uh, it's going to go ahead and set what it thinks is going to be the most optimal settings for for whatever crop you select um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, you don't have to spend as much time taking settings that work in Iowa and putting them to work out here in Colorado. So I think one of the one of the coolest parts we've talked about this quite a bit in the past is just the the different changes and how the display looks and how the predictive ground speed automation, the harvest settings automation looks. And I think when we've been doing these demos so far, that's probably been the nicest thing that customers have seen. Just that it's a little bit different for them to get used to right away, but just having them look at that histogram. Uh, display of all your of your throughput, your yield, your loss, your foreign material, your, your broken grain. Just looking at that all the time and having everything in that one when, when, window, you can pretty much look at all your information right there. So that's been one nice thing to visualize. And I think with that, along with predictive ground speed automation, it really allows you to get the most efficiency out of the machine because you're able to push it more. You know more information about what's going on. So you're, you, we can set our pretty much our max speed and our max power. And of course, when we're running predictive ground speed automation, we can bump that up to 105%, yield more power too. So when we were doing some demos last week, it was a lot easier to, you know, put our max speed in there, in there if, you know, what's, our, what's the fastest we want to go through the field. And even in some cases, we could even bump that up because we got the situations where, you know, we, we weren't running out of power yet. We were pretty much hitting our max speed. So we can almost like, well, if we can go a little bit faster and see what that, see what that does. So that, if what, what we've been seeing so far is it just allows gives you a better insight into the machine how it's performing and how much more you can push that machine too in the past we've always had that the same information on our machines now but no the horsepower is pretty much kind of hidden over in the corner post and kind of a more archaic display and everything's there it's just harder to take in now it's pretty much all in one nice format where you can look at it in one place and make, make better decisions we can really push that machine to get every ounce of productivity out of it we can yeah so not only can you see it on the big display where you have your quality metrics that you can bump up and down, which yep. brings another point. You know, I thought customers would take more time trying to figure that out, but they just jumped in and they just said, well, we'll start at that and yep. we'll see what it does. And, you know, within the first two passes of the field, they're like, yeah, I think it's set just about perfect. Yep. So then you got that to look at along with your clean grain cameras, yep. your tailings cameras that we've had in the past with, with Combine Advisor. And then you start adding in the new PDU on the corner post there, uh, which gives us a more detailed, more defined look at our loss sensors. Yep. What have you guys looked at in the mobile app or in the John Deere Operations Center to help with the this combine and, and uh, productivity, seeing how much we can push that machine? What, what metrics have you looked at there? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> even when we're sitting right here, even we just got started on this field right here and we already had the app out looking to see how the machine was set, what they had with the 
of course that's a nice thing with the new updates they just came out with here shortly and it'll be for all s7 machines but you can see the same metrics on the display you can see pretty much on the apps you can see your grain loss you can see your foreign material you can see your broken grain of course you can see all the machine settings too so we can see how the machine is set when it comes to our clearance our speeds things like that so you can really pretty much look at a live view with the operator seeing the cab from your phone phone standing out here looking at right behind the machine too so so i guess yeah some demos we just did last week with our 700 uh we kind of did head-to-head -head versus a 770 and then we also did uh head-to-head -head with another customer with their 780s too and the 770 that was like preston was talking about is easy to see we were able to push that machine and we could definitely run faster with that machine or better maximize this potential uh by far so unfortunately there our kind of limitation was probably trucks because it was really really good corn so almost 300 bushels so <laughs> we were running the limitations with trucks and grain carts so we when we were running we could push that machine but we had to unfortunately do quite a bit of stop too to kind of let things catch up too so that's kind of one one big consideration we've definitely learned with these machines too is like you have to make sure you got on the back side too if you're going to be pushing these machines that much more and be 20 20 percent more productive is the back end side is your can your grain carts be keep up with 20 percent can your trucks keep up with 20 percent can your grain leg or wherever you're going with the grain keep up with 20 percent so that's kind of the big <laughs> that's definitely a big consideration there too so that we also went head to head on a, a 782 so i would say our 700 was could easily keep up with that 780 no problem and probably even pass it too but getting there we we're, were kind of limited by limited by the capacity of that machine too so but we could definitely our throughput was uh pretty much apples to apples the same i think we're averaged about 4,000 4, bushels uh an hour with that machine versus the 700 and the 780 and then the biggest thing about that was our since it's you know two different size classes they're different motor we had a lot less fuel burn on that 700 so we saw about probably 20 25 percent less fuel usage on that 700 versus those 780s so that was kind of a nice nice consideration there too so no troy thanks for that comment and um you know I, we've always talked to customers interested in x9 combines about can you keep up on the back side of it yeah, and, yeah. and maximize that productivity? And um, so it's a good conversation to have yep. um, and know that, yes, we can expect that 20% productivity gain yep. and you need to be ready for that. Yes, can you fully utilize that 20% yep. all the time? So <laughs> Exactly. When you think about the X9 and now this S7, S7 combine, yeah, you can run faster and if you can keep the grain away, great. But if you can't, you're putting less hours on a machine a year. You're paying less help per year because you're going to get done quicker. Yep. So yeah, you might shut the combine down throughout the day a couple times, but when you look at the overall scheme, I mean, you're getting more bushels out in a day because those trucks aren't stopping. Talking about your demo from last week, they had two operators yeah. on that farm, <laughs> and it was kind of funny because the, the first guy jumped in the combine, and he loved it so much, he almost... You know, you almost had to pry him out of the seat, or I don't even know if he got out of the seat. Yeah, you did eventually. So <laughs> we got him switched around. So <laughs> he didn't want to leave, huh? Yeah, he was he was glued to the seat, and he was like, <laughs> "I love this machine." So I'm surprised he let it leave the place. Yep, yep. Yeah, one big, I wouldn't say challenge, just a change when we're actually running these machines for with customers, and they often there it's a lot to take in with the different display and what you're seeing. But the biggest thing, especially with automation, you know, most guys are just so used to running the hydro handle, it's hard just to tell them like press the button, take your hand off the hydro handle, quit. And some just even just hit, leave their hand there. If they ever so gently nudge it, it kicks out automation. So like, hey, just leave your hand, <laughs> just let, let your hand, hand rest there because yeah, you'll kind of hear the ding and it'll kick out automation if you nudge it ever so gently. So just getting that, getting that change through them. So that was kind of a, when I ran the 700 versus the 780, that was kind of a, a big challenge there because I ran it with the dad and he kind of, it was a, bit, a little more struggle for him to kind of get his head wrapped around, you know, starting the field, getting things down. But when the son hopped in there, which is kind of our my age, our age, he took off with it and ran with it right away. He had it figured out no problem. So just kind of a generational thing there. So just have to be more open to using the technology, letting it to do its thing, let us trust this thing. And we even had, even on that demo, we got a uh, combine turn automation set up on it too. And he loved that too, because it pretty much would turn around the combine perfectly every time and put it right back in the road straight on, not have to sit there kind of herky-jerky and knock rows over, or get back up, go in and get back lined up, things like that. You know, speaking of, combine turn automation <laughs> i actually had it's it's not funny but it is in a way like a sales pitch a little bit but uh i had a customer fall off a ladder and the uh he broke his wrist it was a steer, <laughs> steering wrist and he's the main com combine operator for the operation and i i texted him and said hey it's a good time to run turn automation in the combine <laughs> since you don't need that left hand anymore and he, had, he texted me back and said that he had already turned it on and it was working great. So that's awesome. Things happen on the farm all the time, and technology is there to kind of take the burden off your shoulders. Yeah, yeah. One more, one more step of uh, 
automation that we can give to our customers and, and take that burden off them. And I think of the same thing with your comment, Troy, about uh, really taking your hand off the, the hydro handle. Um, we've seen the same thing with machine sync yep. kind of across the board of, okay, take your hand off of that throttle, yep. uh, let it do what it needs to do, let it be able to catch up. Um, so kind of the same learning curve or same adoption uh, piece for these combines as well. Yeah, I've been talking about yeah productivity, productivity. Yeah, you just mentioned it, machine sync and things like machine sync. And I got a good story on AutoPath too, but I think just we've definitely been hitting machine sync hard this year and we've got lots of people set up and it's, we've heard, I think a lot of customers are interested in it and we've had a lot of good success with it. And that's definitely been, I think the, the go-to technology for this fall by far is right, machine sync and getting that into customers' hands because it's, we pretty much have the hardware and all those machines now. So it's pretty much just turn it on, get it figured out and go. So that's definitely, and we've seen some guys that, you know, the biggest thing with the machine sync is you no longer have to slow the combine down to fill the car so you let you pretty much just maintain the speed on the combine you're getting that you're not decreasing by a mile or a mile and a half every time you fill the cart so you think about that you add that up throughout the day you know that's that's acres acres in a day like preston said you know if you can gain those back keep that machine going normal speed not have to worry about the cart keeping up going too fast things like that that really adds up and we've had i've had some guys even do the math and they probably gain oh in some cases um 20, 25 acres a day, sometimes depending on the situation, because you know they're keep maximizing that machine all day long, not having to slow down every once in a while. And that adds to your productivity gain for the machine itself, right? Yep, yep, um, exactly. Just being able to, to keep it moving and, and go through the field without having to slow down and or stop and yep. those kinds of things. So. Yep, I even have a good success story this fall too of a customer I got set up with AutoPath. They kind of saw that same efficiency too. They run two 12 row heads falling a 24 row. And they've pretty much figured out they probably save gain save an hour hour and a half every day because auto path puts them right where they need to go they don't have to worry about counting rows especially when they open the lands they can pretty much just pick a row and go they know where the center of the pivot is they can just go they don't have to worry about you know making sure they're on the right line and they know since both combines are using auto path and they're using sfrtk now too they know everything is where it's supposed to be that's where it's planted so no more and of course they have all their end rows all their main rows in one guidance line there's no more changing back and forth so stuff like that you know you think about you know, auto path, machine sync, and even all the new features on the S7, it starts to add up pretty quick how we can gain efficiency. Well, yeah, and you, you start talking about machine sync and using controlled traffic, yep. and you get those carts on the auto path line, it just takes the guessing work out of your inexperienced help of picking the right guidance, guidance sign, or like if you're out here on the headlands, trying to get those lines yep. to match up, and everything just works a lot smoother that yep. way. Yes. Load up your work plan and go. You don't have to worry about changing stuff or getting things set up, just go. I've had guys shutting row sense off even yep. when they're running <laughs> auto path. So there's a shameless plug for auto path yep. again. Don't need the row sense sensors out there on the head anymore. Right. And there's Troy, plan, plan, plan. Yep. Get yep. ahead of it, right? Yeah. The better you plan, the better it works out in the field. So. Well, we got a good view of the, the yeah. combine coming here behind us. So uh, um, great to see the machine moving through the field and uh, you know, really taking advantage of that technology, move, moving fast through the field, uh, getting the job done. So, talk about when we talk about what what changes on that machine really give us the productivity. And you look at the side of it, and it's got those extra louvers yeah. uh, to get that airflow to go out through the back just eliminates that circulation in your chaffer and sieve areas and lets that grain fall through and the trash come right through the machine. The other thing that I thought was kind of interesting on the chopper blades, do you ever look at those? Yep, look like old golf balls. <laughs> they got little dimples like a golf ball and Deer says that's the increased airflow yep. through the machine. But you can't you can't put on the older machines too if you want to, so. Yeah. Well, Preston, Troy, thanks for joining us and, and uh, great to be out here kind of live on a customer demo. Um, and uh, if you're interested in one of these machines, please reach out to us at 21st Century Equipment. Happy to talk to you about them, their capabilities, and uh, what they could do on your farm. But uh, Preston Choi, thanks for joining me today, and uh, we'll see you on another edition of the Farmcast.